perseverance. <laughs> I just power through. Um, it was definitely harder in the beginning because you're just adjusting to having children. And then um, there was a lot of fatigue, a lot of, I can't do this, I'm not gonna make it. Um, I, we live in a two-story home, so stairs are, st still can be a challenge. Um, I'm not supposed to carry the girls, much less upstairs, but don't tell Dr. Park that I do. <laughs> um, but I just, I mean, I would do anything for my girls. So um, I do it with heart failure. I think the biggest challenge that I have, well, there are a couple of challenges, but I think the biggest one is really getting individuals around me who don't know about my diagnosis to understand what, what heart failure is and to be able, for them to be able to understand that not all heart disease is necessarily due to lifestyle factors. I think a lot of people assign a certain degree of responsibility to individuals, assuming that they do certain things and you have this certain outcome. And in many cases, that's true. But for me, I didn't have the traditional risk factors like diabetes, high blood pressure, et cetera, that would have led to that. So basically, it became the story that I had to tell of this disease that just sort of appeared and being able to get people to understand that the need to still get themselves checked and be able to have important follow-ups follow at certain points because it can pretty much happen to anyone. And so I think that was a, a big challenge. But then also from a more personal standpoint, I think just recognizing the fact that I have to sort of temper some of my goals a little bit from a physical fitness or athletic standpoint to realize that now, the training now is more about health and not training to compete anymore. I don't live to the disease, I, I really don't. I, I live to what I wanna do. And what my focus is is to get me the best that I can do and do the best I can do and have fun while I'm doing it. And that's all I can do. I don't, I don't believe in the woe is me and oh, I don't want people feeling sorry for me. In fact, my team uh, doesn't even know I have the level of heart failure that I do. Um, and I keep it that way because people look at you a little like, oh, I feel sorry for you because it's, you know, overtly, it's not showing. I'm not, I don't have an oxygen tank with me and they're not seeing me do things during the middle of the day. So I'm sort of a different patient. I try to remind myself that, enjoy the day, enjoy it. Don't always look at all the negative stuff and get all, get all uh, upset about the little small stuff. Just try to do the best you can to enjoy yourself. And that's really what it boils down to. And I, I think that's something that really, uh, everybody should, should strive to do. I think we get caught in the, all the minutia, the negativity and stuff like that. There's a lot of great things happening all around you. You just gotta look at, look at it, change your mindset. And that's what we boil down to, just sort of change how I, look, how I look at things. And don't get me wrong, it's still a struggle in some cases. But when things are not going the way you want to, you have to ask yourself, well, there has to be a reason behind it. I know intellectually I'm a heart failure person. I know that. But I guess in my childlike mind, maybe, I feel energetic, I wanna do things, I've been snorkeling, I travel, I still work full time, I fly full time basically. And so for me, and I know everybody is different, for me, I've been able to continue to do the things that I want to do. You know, they say moms of toddlers are tired and I'm thinking, you don't know tired until you have heart failure. Right now I'm able to, I feel like for the most part, uh, keep up with them. I worry about when they get older and more um, active, um, I won't be able to keep up with them and that worries me, you know, just um, riding our bikes around the neighborhood or going for a hike. I worry that I won't be able to keep up. 
I don't really see it as a challenge except, and I think the team will tell you that when I do um, have the echo done every three months and I have it and I, I always have this trepidation about what those numbers are, but I've come to learn that the numbers aren't the end all be all. So if my ejection fraction was say uh, 28 or 29 this time and it jumps up to 40 and then it's back down to 33, personally I was freaking uh, when that happened, but but when Dr. Trachtenberg explained it, it made it all better. So the challenge for me is to remain calm when I get those numbers because the numbers aren't the end all be. It's how you feel. It's it, on your day to day basis what you're doing. You know, and I feel alive. I feel like I feel like everybody else without heart failure. <laughs>